We, you, the committee, we, the board. Well, yeah. I, I really think it's important because you, if you think about this, this is data that is going to provide a framework and insight to where when we sit down, because the step that comes after this is we sit down as a group and we look at this and we say, what does it tell us? And then we need to move on to a conversation that says, what do we want our, um, what do we think about our current strategy? And what as a group in a workshop, uh, if we think we need to make significant changes to that, somebody says, I want to I'll give you an example. Based on the feedback, I think we should toss out uh, personalized learning and do something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, that's, we're trying to get information. So that's an informed conversation, not just eight people sitting around a table okay. opi opining. Okay. Um, and I, so I, I have a couple of little points, but I'm not going to bother words. No, go ahead. Here. I'll just shoot you an email with my, my thoughts on some of the questions. Okay. All right. And, and do me a favor, just copy, you can copy all three of us. I was planning to do so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I, yeah, I just did not use time up at our meeting. So thank okay. you. All right. Miss Olson. Um, uh, same. I may shoot an email just with like a question or two, but um, just as a, well, thank you for doing this, first of all, and and just um, just as a as a uh, general question or comment, I guess you know in, in the beginning it says like twenty seven questions should take about twenty minutes to complete, and I, I'm sure you probably already cut it down, right? I'm sure you probably already are trying to pick like the most important, um, you know, cut into subsections and trying to pick the most important. I'm just thinking of myself and my own family, you know, two working parents, three kids, and if I was like, oh, this survey is going to take me twenty minutes. You know, I might be like, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. And if 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 there's a way to somehow, and I know we need to get data, and I know we need to get feedback. You're you know trying to get parent feedback, and it needs to be specific. Um, if there's a way to, and then if I had another one come out like three weeks or maybe four weeks later, and I was like, didn't I just do a twenty minute survey? Like that's how I would feel. That's just me, and um, <laughs> but that's just maybe I'm stretched too thin, which I probably am, but. Um, if there's a way to condense it or a, a somehow um, a way to make it slightly less long, I feel like you may get more people participating. Yes. Um, let me just say this again. Uh, we had eight meetings. Uh, as Karen Kowalski said, you know, there was a lot of people, I shouldn't say, a few people giving lots of input. Um, I'm where you are. I would have this thing even shorter than what it is. But um, this is the consensus that came from the three of us and uh, you know, incorporating Dr. Jones's requests. So um, this is what we're, this is the compromise to get there. But I really appreciate your feedback. Dr. Jones. Um, just two, just two quick items on um, going back to Christina's question. We usually do a teacher survey towards the end of the year, and we're working on that. It's some of the questions really aren't applicable during COVID, um, and so, and we are also trying to on the panorama side to condense um, to answer Megan's question so that you know we can get rid of some of that um, fatigue. The other thing is just to keep in mind that we, you know, we'll try to space them out, but uh, whether or not we can actually do this particular survey the first week in May, just keep in mind next week is the last week in April and that we haven't discussed this and it hasn't started, we haven't started building it uh, inside the survey software. So we just don't know how long it will take. Um, generally, it would be either Jen Lau or myself that would build that. And Jen is also uh, the person that oversees um, all of our um, NGSS testing, SBAC. So she's doing a lot right now and, and she runs the remote school on the back end. So we're gonna work as quickly as we can. I just wanna set realistic expectations um, that we'll get it done, but uh, whether or not it's the first week in May is just gonna depend once we get into start doing the work, how long it actually takes. Thank you. Uh, I wanna take a moment uh, to thank the committee members. You got several uh, sets of draft minutes up today, but you're still missing the five early meetings. It would be great if you could get those posted so that we can see the work that was done there. Uh, and I think you guys are planning to vote on them at some point in the near future. So that would be good to close that loop. Um, I too am concerned about timing, uh, you know, even before Dr. Jones just mentioned not having built this, 
Uh, I'm concerned about where we are in the year. It's the end of the year. There's a lot going on. You know, in terms of priorities, you know, Panorama is really, really uh, important. I understand the importance of this too. We're, we need to balance that out. Um, I absolutely don't recall staff being as staff being involved enough in the uh, decisions that were made around the last strategic plan. I, in fact, I, I'd be uh, anxious to hear from Carol about her recollections on that, but I, I don't think there was enough staff, staff involvement. And since they're a part of the, I think it's basically a, uh, you know, there, there's four legs to this. There's the board, there's the administration, there's the staff, and there's the parents, right? And and if we're only uh, looking at a, a couple of those, we're, we're going to miss out on, I think, what would be very, very valuable input. Uh, and to, to put it on Dr. Jones to figure out what the right questions are, that's our job, uh, quite frankly. There are probably different questions than we're going to ask the parents. In terms of the questions, and I know people don't want to spend the time to do this, but I think, you know, it's a public meeting. This is where we're supposed to do this. Uh, and the demographic screener, which is your first set where, you know, it says we're going to be asking about relevant subgroups and, and uh, middle school and all the rest. We don't. The two questions that are shown on the page are actually, uh, are, are any of your children attending or have attended a college or university? We're not even asking them uh, what school their kids are going to. And the next question is, did you or your children attend? Did your children, did your child or children who attended uh, college or university graduate from Greenwich High School? So this is a parent survey. I'm not sure why we're asking college questions. On the um, next section, we're very focused on personalized learning, but if you go back and look at the strategic plan, there's actually three goals there. There's the uh, academic, the personal, and the interpersonal. We're not asking about those at all. Uh, the other thing I'd ask the committee to do is make sure that's the right definition of personalized learning because it's changed so many times through the years. I, I frankly don't know what the current definition is and, uh, and it's probably worth, worth double checking that. Uh, and then when we get into the meat of it, which is I think really what we, what we are most curious about is the, the, the focus, the strengths, the weaknesses, you're asking them to rank order 18 items on a one to seven scale. That, that's just excessive for, for a survey that you know, you're asking parents to invest time in. There's gotta be a better way to do that. Um, I, I just think it's, it's a lot of work. I, I know as a, uh, as a person who gets surveyed all the time professionally, I probably would walk away from this one. So I don't know how to better do that. I know why you're doing it because I, I know enough about building a survey that the data would be amazingly useful. I just think from a usability standpoint, that's not gonna, that's not gonna get, uh, get a lot of responses. And I, I think that that presents its own set of problems. So anyway, those are, those are my high level thoughts at this point. I'm not gonna try to wordsmith your questions, but, but I, I think we're missing on the demographic. We're not asking the right questions to figure out what level- Yeah, Peter, I, I um, so uh, there's a piece of information you're missing. I appreciate you asking the question. Um, a demographic screener is standard. Um, we originally in the first draft we got, which came from, that area of it came from uh, Jennifer Negrin, the expert. Um, there were two people on the committee uh, who objected to using a screener, some of the questions that were in the screener, um, in an effort to eliminate endless debate about that. Uh, we decided to use the standard one that's in the tool that we're using, which is SurveyMonkey. Uh, you guys can go look it up if you want. Uh, it's a, a six or seven question thing. But um, on some of these areas of the survey, unfortunately, in the preparation of it, um, you know, it went four or five rounds. So a lot of this was to um, um, try to, uh, uh, you know, resolve every issue that every individual had. So the screener, you're right. The two questions that are there are Greenwich specific questions in addition to the standard screener. And the, uh, the reason they're there is to uh, allow us to segment the data so that when we get to the strategy, we can see if there's any difference 
in what parents want and prioritize based upon whether or not they've had a kid go all the way through the system or whether they're someone who have not reached the high school and not had the full experience of a Greenwich uh, education so that we can segment those two things. Um, but the screener has a set of, set of questions and it's just a reference in the programming to the standard one that SurveyMonkey is to reduce the debate and controversy of um, us writing our own screener. I understand about the screener, but I guess when you present this, uh, I was expecting we'd see all the questions. So, um, it's well, it's a good thing you asked the question, and now you have the clarification. Yeah, so, I, I, I still, I still do have other issues, and I'll probably send a uh, an email to the committee. Uh, but, but I do ask you to go look at asking people to rank order one to seven, 18 different items. Uh, just it's it's a usability issue that I, I'm not. I, sure. I I I completely agree. A lot of these were inherited from the last uh, strategy survey that was used in the district. Um, I, I appreciate the feedback. I, I think in my case, you won't get any argument about that. But as I say, again, um, in order to get a consensus on what everybody wanted, uh, this is where we landed. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll leave it there for now. Ms. Stowe? Um, great. This is very helpful. Um, thanks so much. Um, I went back a, a couple days ago when I had time um, over the weekend, because I really don't have time during the week, to look um, at your minutes. And I guess they were posted today, because I was trying to just sort of see the, the history. Um, and so since I didn't have a chance to do that then, um, this Jennifer Negrin, she sounds great. Mm -hmm. um, so did she come to the committee meetings? Was she a part of this whole process? Could you tell me, like, did she actually write these questions? Um, I'd love. Maybe we should hear from her. Maybe we should have her come back. Like, I'd love to hear a little bit about how, like, what her involvement was exactly in this process. Her involvement is she's known to some people in the in the in the district, particularly the PTAs. Um, uh, Patty Jomo, as an example, came to our meeting, and in a couple of cases. She spoke very highly of the work that Jennifer had lent expertise to GHS PTA in support of their surveys and other people. Um, we tend to meet during the day. Jennifer runs a business. She could not always meet with us during the day. So what we would do is we would go back and forth with her on the survey. Um, like most recently, as an example, she went through and detail and she wrote individual comments on the survey um, in the meeting with her in the meeting that we had that she could not attend. Uh, we went through each one of those comments. We put them up on the screen. They were visible to everybody on the committee, as well as all of the people on the outside, like Brian Peldunas and others who were there so they could see them in a fully transparent uh, way. Um, and she's given us the support that she can that fits in with her real life. Like mm. you run a business all day long. Yeah. So, no. mm -hmm. um, and she's uh, given us that I input and feedback every uh, step of the way. That's so, great. You know, what is she? she contributes as she can. I mean, I could always ask her to come to an evening meeting or see if you guys want to sit down and talk with her. Um, I we try to be kind of um, respectful. Of, yeah, she's doing this for free, right? So that's well, and she's a super senior executive and an expert at this. She's not, you know, she's not like a retired, mm -hmm. you know. So I, you know, we we try to be respectful of that. But you know, if if somebody wants to get together and we can get her in an evening, I mean, yeah. I, I, I don't, I mean, you know, the question is, how long do we want to goof around with this, right? And um, you know, you can do this stuff all day long. I mean, the last time we did this as a board, we used an outside firm. Mm -hmm. My experience in this as strategy executive is I would hire Bain or other people and they wouldn't use them here. The reason I hire them is for this exact reason what's happening right here, which is um, sometimes groups, you know, for whatever reason, they just can't get there. 
So they need a facilitator. Yeah. Doesn't mean they wind up in a different place, but it's just the, the functionality of the people they're working with. And um, that's why, you know, in the case of the one that we're investing in in special education, um, I mean, I couldn't imagine doing special education. We were trying to do it internally without spending $1 of the board's res of the district's resources. This is a strategy. Yeah. I mean, I, we're either a strategy driven organization, we're not, but this is where we're landing based on, we're not spending any money on it. Yeah, so, and there's no cost to actually the distribution, I assume, because we're using like SurveyMonkey or some internal. District already has that. I mean, right. I will tell you, the district uses SurveyMonkey. It's not a good tool for this. It is not a good tool for this. It doesn't question, we've had to modify the way questions are written to the limitations of SurveyMonkey. Mm -hmm. Okay, questions should be written in what's called a max diff perspective so that you don't have to have, to Peter's point, 18 of these things. It should be on a rotating basis. You only need to ask certain samples. You automatically, it programs and tells you the answers based upon taking in a thousand. SurveyMonkey is too basic. It doesn't do that. Right. But that's the tool that we have. That we can afford. That, right. Well, I don't know if we can afford it. It's the one we have. Okay. So what, is there a chance that you think, um, and, and I mean, yeah. I, mean I, I know there's a standard um, expectation for hit ratios on surveys, but has anyone assessed what we thought this one might be? Did Jennifer had an opinion? Um, I don't know if you know this, maybe you guys have been, been through enough surveys since you've been on the board. I'm trying to think of the schedule. What happens in Greenwich is, um, and the best example of this is a survey that was done around uh, racial balance and the plans that we had, maybe none of you were even involved in that. Um, we hired an outside firm, we paid them 40 or $50,000 they specialized in this, they're called Metis Associates. Peter Bernstein will remember this, it happened right about the time he was joining the board. Um, they surveyed, they had a hit rate in the high 70s percent and they delayed delivering the data to us for two months because they couldn't believe it. They said in their history, they'd never seen that. Our surveys in Greenwich are well, well above the Market. minimum end sample, right. I would be shocked if this one all of a sudden didn't follow that pattern. Okay. Um, so do, maybe- I think, um, the, I think the bigger quite issue, uh, Kathleen, yep. is do we have samples enough for the sub-segments? So I'll give you an example. Um, do we have enough um, uh, disadvantaged families in the sample? I think the sample at the top line will be great. You know, we'll, we'll have enough for the big questions, but as we break down the samples, will our N be big enough? Um, that remains to be seen. Right. Individual school, you know, those kinds of things, but at the top level, we'll have more, because an N in this is about a hundred. We're gonna have thousands. Yeah. Um, all right, well, maybe, well, let's talk about when I get to agenda planning, but I wonder if we could do this with Jennifer or something later on, but thank you. All right, and I see Joe's hands up. Sorry, I don't want to take any more time. Sure. Mr. Kelly. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm missing something here. Maybe I'm stupid. Uh, our strategic plan mm -hmm. is to put out a survey that people may or may not fill out. Uh, no. Uh, what we're doing is part of the development of the strategic plan, Joe. The best way I can put it in context for you, I think, is last January when we were doing mission and vision, you were saying, why don't we go ask people? We're on the ask people step. Okay, okay. We're, going to, we're going to get input so that when the board sits down, it's informed by what our parents are telling us, not what we think. And the survey will result in a lot of data so that we can have a robust conversation that is informed by what our parents want, not what the eight of us suspect the parents want. That's, okay. the, purpose. Thank That's you. the purpose of this exercise. 
It's a good question. All right, so let's talk about next steps. I think a couple of board members have uh, said they'll email you some uh, some questions about the actual survey itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, given that all committees are advisory to the board, I think the board has to make the final decision as to the survey and when to send it out. So I guess uh, the ask is to get content back to you as quickly as possible. And then we can figure out when when we can meet to actually look at it and see if we approve the, uh, the sending of it. And, and I guess in the meantime, you know, we can see what it would take to get it built as well, because that, that does sound like a constraining factor. Does that make sense, Peter? Um, I, I don't know if that was a yes or no or a maybe. Uh, Peter, I'll do whatever the board wants. I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> I, you know, it, it's before the board. If the board wants to have a bunch more bites at the apple and delay it, that's up to the board. I wouldn't advise that. I mean, you appointed the three of us to take care of this task for the board. Tonight's the and first time the board is talking about the survey. It was just posted a couple of days ago. Peter, with all due with all due respect, we've met eight times. I've sent multiple notes to board members not on this committee asking for input. Nobody's attended any of the these things that are scheduled, other than the three members of the committee. And there's been no input from anybody of the other five members of the board. So please don't, if people, look, I, if I wanna be involved in policy governance, I gotta show up at a policy governance meeting. That's my responsibility as a board member, okay? So I, look, it's before us and for you guys to, for you, I should say that, nobody else on the board implied that, that this is the first time and they had no opportunity for input. I, I, it's just, it's, it's, it's offensive. So please don't say it again. Okay, Peter, you haven't posted minutes from your meetings. You've been asked several times. Today is the first time we've had a discussion at a board level. The first time that the, the, when the document was- Sure, you are, you are correct. This time, is the first time we've five talked- Five of us have seen the survey questions, Peter. Uh, you don't go to every committee meeting, nor do I, it really is up to uh, up to the committee to present to the board and the board to make a decision. Here, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna arm wrestle. I'm, look, 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 look. These are I'm not going to the board. So I'm not going to arm wrestle you about this. If you don't want to do it and put it in the field, then we won't put it in the field. It's up to I, you. Here, I was legitimately asking you what process you wanted to move to use to move this forward. If you don't want to address the I, board, I would hope yeah. board members would come forward and say, we'd like these, we are asking these questions, or I think here are some positive suggestions about modifications to this. Okay. I, I, look, if you guys want to have another meeting about this and you want to schedule it, Peter, I, I can't stop that. That's what we'll do. Look, the alternative, Peter, is to shelve this and basically push it to the next board. No, the alternative is to trust your committee, take the input, make the modifications, not wordsmith this to death and put it in the field. That's the alternative. That's definitely not the procedure we use, Peter. It's not the procedure we use for policies. You said you don't attend the policy governance committee meetings, but you do get two opportunities at a board meeting to comment on the policies. That, that is the process we've used. It's our policy actually. Peter, okay. Peter, I've been on. We'll leave, leave it there. Members, please. Send no, 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 no. The, Peter, I'm, I'm sorry. Point of order. Was, hold on. Yes, point of order, Mr. Kelly. May we take a deep breath, and may yes. we move on to the next topic, please. Well, we need to know what we're doing with this. We need instructions from the board. Well, Peter, that's exactly what I was trying to figure out with you. I think Peter suggested right that we all send comments. And then I would love to have a meeting with this Jennifer woman so that we could all hear her thoughts. And then let's see where we end up. That's my thought. I'm, I'm one of eight, but I do agree that our process and obviously from being on the policy committee that we have a first read, if you will, and then we vote on it. So this is the first read. Guys, with all due respect, with all due respect, I've been on this board 12 years. We have never, ever, ever vetted a survey in the board, ever. 
Okay, this is fine. You guys want to do this. This is fine. I'm okay with that. But let's not associate to these things. We have never, we've sent a gazillion surveys and we've never vetted one of them before the board before. The board has sent a gazillion surveys? Yes. I, yes. I've been on the board for three years and I haven't sent one survey out yet. But okay. I guess in the prior nine, maybe a lot went out, but. But it's okay. Okay. Right. That's fine. And I, I, look, guys, we developed. I was it. just suggesting a process, yes, but you know, I, if other people have other here's, views. Here's what's going to happen, Kathleen. If I if I agree with here's Kathleen, the, do we get to move on? No. What I'm asking you guys is, here's the thing, guys. If we go this way, we're not going to be able to look at this until the middle of May because that's going to be our next meeting. Well, we may have a meeting before then. We actually have a uh, session on the 13th scheduled, Peter, and we could actually. Have a the 13th meeting. 13th is the meeting. middle of May, isn't it? We, we could schedule a special meeting just for this if you guys turn it around quickly. It's not beyond the realm of possibility. That's what I was asking you. I Didn't we also hear from Tony that like it couldn't really be done in the first week of May anyway, given the Jen Lau schedule and all the other stuff? So maybe that's the reality anyway we're at. So if that's the case, then does I'm just going through the calendar. Is May, May 13 logical? And then it goes out right after the panorama survey. Uh, I'm just throwing out ideas here. And I know I'm just, again. Kathleen, this Zoom session only lasts 12 hours. So if we don't move on soon, uh, we'll have to go reconvene again for another meeting. You guys tell me what you want to do. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, you guys figure it out and tell me what you want to do and we'll do whatever you want to do. Well, I think at this point, the, uh, the next critical step is for, for uh, board members to send comments to the committee. And then we'll have to figure it out from there. And if you if you get the comments and you say we're ready, we'll schedule the meeting. I think that's the best path forward. With that, I think we're going to move on. So the next item on our agenda is uh, about Cardinal Stadium. It's really about project planning and discussion on a, a possible building committee. Um, this topic had come up when we were discussing phase one. We obviously moved forward without a building committee. Uh, there was an interest from, uh, from some folks on the RTM to the point where District 9 actually had, uh, had made a motion to the RTM to, uh, to change the ordinance. And Mike, would you mind bringing the document up? Actually, uh, we actually have the page from the uh, RTM call. Basically, uh, as things stand now, uh, when we request state funding for a, uh, a capital project, we are required by town charter to have a building committee and that actually appears in state law. Uh, the, the folks from, um, from District 9 uh, originally were suggesting that if there were federal aid involved or there were one or more municipal improvements involved that a building committee ought to be put in place. Uh, what their current thinking is, and if you give me a second, I have an email from the district chair, and I just want to make sure I'm true to what she said, um, that they strongly believe an ordinance to find building committee benefits the town and the BOE and should be used whenever possible to ensure transparency and oversight of town funds. Uh, but they also recognize there's a need for a waiver process so that if there's something that requires a municipal improvement, but really is a small scale project that doesn't need to be managed by a building committee, that they're trying to find a way forward on a waiver process. So they would amend their, their uh, previous suggestion to the RTM. The RTM has not taken this up yet. Uh, District 9 was originally slated to meet tonight, but they, they did not meet. They're going to meet uh, soon. Uh, and I know that a couple of them are on. What they're looking for is thoughts from Board of Ed members on how this might work, uh, what kind of a waiver would be in place, and then I know Mr. Kelly had thoughts on, uh, on having a building committee for phase two. Uh, we do know from, from town council that the Board of Ed, while, while the charter says that we, we must have one where there's a uh, application for state funding, according to town council, we could request one otherwise, even if we weren't seeking state funding. So this is obviously we did not get money for phase two from, uh, from BET for the upcoming budget year. Uh, but that is a uh, open question that will need to be decided in the future when uh, when the next capital request is made for that project. But the more important thing right now is that District 9 is actually seeking feedback from board members. Mr. Kelly, I don't know if you wanted to add anything to that because I know you'd, uh, you'd spoken with them as well. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, District 9 makes a good point. 
uh, when you look at the perspective of a citizen of the town, not as a member of the Board of Education. Uh, you want representation on any major project, uh, but as a Board of Ed member, and, you, and when you understand the project, you might not think that is the case. So somehow we have to find out between where it's good to get a committee full of our, uh, our neighbors in the community together uh, to uh, give instructions to our, our fine uh, uh, Dan Watson and his crew on what they need to do in a project, or whether it be just the Board of Education giving the advice. For example, in uh, phase two of Cardinal Stadium, uh, we have the, uh, the Millbrook Association has, uh, they'd like to put some input or have some input on how that second egress road uh, will affect them. Hillside Association certainly wants their input. We have a member of the BET wants us to examine or do a feasibility study paid for by a private operate organization for a possible ice skating rink on one of the tennis courts that we will be moving. Uh, so that needs to be discussed. We have the uses of the visitor side uh, new building. Uh, we have track expansion, which we're trying to uh, get an organization who wants a dedication uh, to the, uh, a plaque dedicated to our 52 year uh, track coach who passed away recently, uh, Mongo, uh, and they want to raise money to increase the size of the track to make it a competitive track. <coughs> the uh, tree uh, conservator, conservancy uh, has a say in the matter because there's a lot of trees that we have to address uh, within the new road. We have the uh, fire and police department who have uh, input on the public safety of the second uh, egress. We have the movement of tennis courts. Uh, we have the uh, uh, landscaping necessary to satisfy all the neighbors involved. And uh, uh, we also have, uh, we have a lot of an issue which might accelerate this process, which has come up recently, where we have the bridge work on Hillside and Route 1, which is going to cause a traffic issue, which a second form of egress will give us some relief on that traffic nightmare that that bridge work will cause. We also have uh, uh, these, we need help or, or a discussion on the uh, uh, DOT and the kind of curb cut we're expanding on what we have right now. And uh, we have also the field remediation that we all talked about and know about. Uh, if we speeded up the second form of egress, that would take a lot of pressure off the whole project when it comes to field remediation. So needless to say, there's a whole lot of moving parts just on phase two. So is that something that we wanna burden all those moving parts and all the politics involved there with just one, uh, with just Dan Watson and his crew? Or do we wanna have neighborhood input on such, uh, uh, such a complicated issue? Uh, I would say in something like this, neighborhood uh, input, community input would be helpful. Uh, how do we get there? What do we do? How do we form that? Well, do we give it to the selectmen to form a traditional building committee? Uh, do we form subcommittees from uh, created by the Board of Education? These are things that certainly need to be discussed, but there's certainly more opinions on the uh, on uh, phase two of uh, the Cardinal Stadium project uh, need uh, some uh, addressing. Uh, as far as phase one goes, that was a very simple, clear cut uh, project. Uh, so it was very easy and didn't need outside input and outside management. So when things get complicated, uh, are there many experts within our community uh, that could help us uh, uh, overcome some of these obstacles? Well, I think there are, and I've been told there are. Uh, also, there's an issue of fundraising where there's people willing to donate money uh, to the uh, Cardinal Stadium project, uh, and we don't really have a vehicle to do that. We can't agree on a vehicle uh, to help raise money for this project. So there's a whole lot of moving parts that outside input uh, might help on, uh, and uh, uh, so they make a valid point. Uh, if anybody has any questions about this specific project, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what, I, I'm a little confused about what this item is because it just landed. Um, there, was, <laughs> there was just a cover sheet, so this is not the conversation I expected from the title, but I, I guess I'll try to deal with it on the fly. Um, the, uh, I, I don't understand. I mean, maybe I need some basics here. I, I don't understand why, why and who made the decision not to have a building committee for Cardinal Stadium in the first place? Under town charter, Peter, the only time there's a building committee is when we are seeking state money. There's no state money available for the project confirmed with the state multiple times. 
Still trying, but they keep telling us no. Okay, but have building committee. So building committees have been formed for MISA, for New Lab, uh, for Glenville, for Ham Ave. Right. No, I, 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 Peter, Peter, Peter I understand. Thank you. I under I understand that part. I'm, I've asked a specific question. We did. You're saying we didn't have it because we couldn't apply for reimbursement. Is that correct? There's no reimbursement, and under town charter. You have a building committee when there's reimbursable uh, state funding. Okay, because the part that's really confusing is, which is um, the, the state says very clearly, uh, and I, I don't think I ever saw those emails. To do, who, who got these emails from the state that said there's no money? Uh, Mr. O'Keefe, I know connected with the state. So, Sean, I don't know if you can uh, if you can talk to us. It, it's okay if you have it in writing. Could you please forward it? Yep, I have it in writing. Okay, because it says very clearly, uh, school construction grants. It says uh, there's two kinds. One, which is a normal school, which you have to go get on the priority list, the annual priority list. But then there's a non-priority list and it's very clear non-priority list projects which we're to apply for are remedy damage from fire and catastrophe to correct safety health and code violations which is what happened in phase one of cardinal stadium to replace roofs i'm wondering why we don't uh, we didn't apply for there's a couple of roofs we've replaced right lately um Remedy certified school indoor air quality emergency and to purchase installed portable classrooms, which fortunately we don't have to do, maybe we don't have to do as it relates to North Mianus. So I, I was just wondering why we didn't go through the process of applying. For this project, particularly since we're talking about Cardinal Stadium. I mean, this clearly qualifies to correct safety, health, and other code violations. We had code violations and it caused the thing to be condemned. And that was the rationale for rebuilding the bleachers. Yeah, early mm -hmm. on, um, Mr. Sure, I know Lori O'Donnell reached out to check on this first. Then when Sean came on board, we checked on it again. Um, and then I think he might've even done a third time, Sean, recently. Uh, I did, and yeah. it, came direct, it came directly from the director of the uh, school construction office that uh, athletic facilities stadiums do not qualify for for, for uh, grants through the uh, Department of Education. And, and as detached, I do believe that um, like yeah, a but, gymnasium but, that's attached to the actual school um, yeah, but, is totally detached. Yeah, that's because that's not what the statute says. It says uh, a pure tenant um facilities and this would be that well whatever okay so um I, I guess the question becomes um do the, does this thing does does this phase two because following peter bernstein's logic we didn't appoint one because we can only appoint one when? I didn't say only, Peter. In fact, I said uh, post phase one, when the RTM districts were, were asking about it, town council said there probably is an opportunity for the board to request a building committee. There is a question, though, about whether that truly is a charter building committee and whether the funding, the BET would allow that building committee to control the funding once it's appropriated. Has that specific question been asked of council? And are I they- I don't think that's been answered yet. That's kind of out there. I, I, because I'm if sorry. this, goes, if this you... goes forward, it basically means any any project, Peter, if the, if the provision uh, that RTM District 9 puts forward, any project that has uh, MI associated with it would need a building committee. But for, they're working on some kind of waiver language. So let's say we wanted to put, uh, remember the shed, right? Mr. Kelly will, uh, Oh, remember, we had somebody that wanted to donate a shed. If we had to go get MI because we were over FAR and because of where we wanted to put it, is that really something that requires a building committee? Probably not. So the, 
the district is working on thinking about how to have a waiver process. Well, I, I believe I, I, this I hands, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this hands raised. I apologize. I wouldn't go that way. Uh, what I would do is I would do this. Have, I think the default should be have a building committee to take the work off the table of the administration. We don't have enough resources to manage all this as Joe Kelly has outlined. Uh, it, it's all falling to Dan Watson and, and we don't have enough staff to manage all this. So I, I've always believed that projects of a particular scope and scale, we should just, we should get a building committee to help out. We're still the owner. We're still, we, we write the specifications and all we're doing is out tasking to somebody else all of the work of getting the job done. We, we control the spec. We're the people who sign off and accept it. I, don't, I never understood why we were trying to take this on ourselves with everything else that's going on. I, District nine, I don't, I don't, I haven't talked to them, so I don't really know exactly what they're thinking. I, I think we, it should be board policy to have building committees. I would follow the standard process. Let's not try to create five different versions of building committees. I think that's a, not a good idea. And we should do it, follow the model that exists everywhere we've done it, it's been successful. And say for these types of projects, it's board policy, we're gonna have one. And I, I would bet that would also be music to the ears of uh, other parts of town. And candidly, it fits perfectly with the recommendations of Blum and Shapiro. I, I, I don't think we should overcomplicate this. And I think we should be leading on this. And I, I think this, hey, we're going to have our own version of it separate from what the selectmen for certain kind of project, I don't know why we would add that level of complication to our lives. Yeah, so I think Peter, that's the direction District 9 is going and basically by, uh, by, by modifying the, uh, the ordinance to state the building committees for any project with MI would then take that shift any of those projects. Under the charter though, the building committee becomes the owner of the project. We set the specs, the mm -hmm. building committee identifies the architect and selects them. We vote on the architect. The building committee goes and uh, goes and creates designs with the architect. We vote on the design. That's our right. role. Right. Um, but, but I got to say, it's not going to eliminate any work for, uh, for our staff because our staff sits on each and every building committee. So, uh, you know, the new board liaison tomorrow for the, for the entranceway at the high school, Dan will be there. Dan is going to be at every building committee meeting because once those, projects are done, they get turned over to us for, uh, for care and custody. So our staff is still involved in every step of the way. Yeah, and as I say, Peter, I, that's, that's the whole point I'm trying to make, and I'll, because I didn't make that point effectively. I don't think MI is the right qualifier. I think the qualifier should be more around scope and scale, because as an example, I mean, look at the high school. If I have to move a shed, you know, or, or make it 13 feet bigger. I got to go, I got, I got to go get an MI. I, I don't want a building committee for adding 13 feet, 13 square feet to a shed. It should be based on scope and scale. I, I would have it. And I, I think Peter, they tried to move in that direction. They were looking at dollar figures at one point, but, you know, use the soil remediation as a, uh, as an example, it's a very high cost project. Mm -hmm. Would that need a building committee? No, you want the environmental experts running that, right? And so Amy Seabird- But that's not a board of ed project. No, it's not, but if it were. So Western Middle School at this point is a board of ed project. Would right. we have a building committee for that? I'm not so sure. You want the experts handling that project, right? You're not gonna, you're not gonna just turn it over to anybody and uh, and hope it gets done. So, I, but I the board, but the, 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 the board could the decide idea. to give that to DPW. If you can let me finish, please. Where they're going with the idea of a waiver is if you have to add 13 feet to a shed or move something, and it would require an MI, the waiver process basically says this project is not worth a building committee, and the board would. I don't know what mechanism they're going to come up with when they were looking at is the Board of Ed basically would ask for that and it would go to the selectmen to decide whether they need a building committee. All right. That's the feedback District 9 is looking for and I think we've got yours. So I'm going to move on to Miss Olson. 
Actually, uh, I'm lowering my hand. Sorry. I, my question, my my point was just that we hadn't seen this before, um, but that was already a, that was brought up already. So I'm gonna. Yeah, we we had discussed this actually at our last um, agenda planning session, and I'm sorry. I, Thought everybody had seen the RTM call because I, I think all BOE members get that. Okay. Miss Downey. Oops. Um, I, you know, kind of apropos to Peter's point about scope and scale. I mean, I was going to suggest a dollar amount or some other trigger because my concern is a waiver. As we know, things do not, processes in this town are not smooth and easy. And I'm concerned about a waiver process being overly and unduly complicated. So I think it would have to be really well thought out and very streamlined so that you're not creating a whole new bureaucratic nightmare to have a waiver process on the third, like going back to the shoes, the shed, you know, you don't want to create all this work um, to do that. So that's my thought on that. I, I think we're not really talking about the stadium. We're really talking about the RTM call. Is that correct, Peter? Yeah, at this point, we're talking about the RTM cause. Okay, said, it's not really about the stadium. Come, stuff. The stadium will come this back, is a, of course, as yeah, a capital request, and at that point, we can make that decision. That's not okay. That's right fine. Now. Thank you. All right, and uh, Christina and Peter, I think you're unmuted. So if you want to mute uh, before we move on to Miss Kowalski. I'm on there. Um, so look, I I've said it many times and I'll say it again. I, I think a building committees are good ideas. I I agree that there may be some complication around how you frame it and when they what which projects, right? The building of a shed doesn't seem to make sense if it needs a building committee. Um, and maybe there is a simpler way to to have that articulated um, from a scope and scale component. But I do think that having a building committee when we're spending uh, tens of millions of dollars of taxpayer dollars uh, and there are some of the issues, particularly those outlined by Mr. Kelly um, happen all the time in projects, the town and, and, the, and those stakeholders should have a, a voice and be able to get this done and push it through. I realize that Dan goes to every meeting and he goes to and all these projects ultimately are turned over to us. But um, at the end of the day, I think it's just, it's better governance, it's better oversight. If there is a committee in place to oversee these massive projects um, that, the, that the Board of Ed is undertaking. And I think that that makes the perfect sense. And I would be, my, my vote would be for a, um, for the stadium itself would be to have a building committee and on all you know, major projects. And we just have to figure out how major projects are defined, but I think building committees are the right idea. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Kelly, uh, can I take Ms. Hirsch and then we'll come back to you? Absolutely. All right, thank you, Ms. Hirsch. Yeah, I mean, my comment is more of a, a process question. You know, this, this was listed on on our agenda as, as a Cardinal Stadium project planning and a discussion on a possible village committee. Uh, and it seemed to reference specifically for this, for, for the stadium. I, I think what we're discussing now is, is a much more in depth and uh, has a long reaching and far reaching uh, effect. And I, and I think that before we as a board opine or share thoughts, I, I think we need more information. This is the first time I'm actually seeing the uh, the RTM call and or hearing that they are discussing uh, a change to some of the waiver. And I, I think I think we really need more information because this, this has a possibility of long lasting effects. If it's just for the stadium, that's one thing. But if we're talking about changing how we do our uh, facilities management and building, uh, building committees and so forth, I, I think that we need a lot more information um, and input from, um, you know, other, other you know, uh, areas as well. Um, so mine's really more about a process because it wasn't um, on our agenda as anything other than a, a cardinal stadium. And we veered off into discussing the RTM um, District 9's uh, comments. And I, I just, it wasn't posted as, as that and, and the material wasn't there. So, um, you know, I, I just would like to see if we if we can bring this back with, with more detail, more information so we can have a, a really in-depth conversation because it's, you know, it deserves it. <laughs> 
Well, I, I do appreciate that. I, I will say District 9's actions are, are not going to hinge on what the Board of Ed says or does. Um, I'm sure they'll take uh, input into consideration. I know there's several of them on tonight and there'll be other people who will uh, probably watch the video. Uh, look, it, you can feel free to reach out. Uh, that's actually your RTM district. So, you know, they are your representatives. Uh, you might, might want to talk to them. All right, we'll take Mr. Sharon and then Mr. Kelly to close us out. You're muted, Peter. I just want to be clear. Um, I, I think for any kind of, look, any kind of project, we ought to have a building committee. And I, I don't I don't want to play this. I can't only I wish the, the town charter and the BET would just set the rules that are standard across the town for all kinds of projects like this. Uh, building committees have always worked for large scale projects for the board. In the, the whole time I've been on the board, including going all the way back to Hamilton Avenue, um, the only project we didn't have one for that was large scale was Cardinal Stadium. Um, you know, not look, that project has not gone swimmingly. It's taken a very long time. People tried different things, they tried to use the architects to do things instead. We all got the note from Joe Kelly that said, uh, uh, oh, by the way, the tree warden is now issue. Um, he, in the note, it kind of presented it like it was a surprise. Um, building committees know you got to deal with, um, experienced building committees know you got to deal with the tree warden. That shouldn't have been a surprise to anybody. It's inconvenient. And I really appreciate whatever Joe's doing. He seems to have taken on almost the job of a uh, personal project manager for this project. Um, I appreciate his efforts to move it forward, but it's not right to have a board member be doing that and behaving that way. So, um, you know, we kind of put ourselves in this position. I would hope we would learn from it. And um, building committees work. I think the issue with the hand is simple. The Board of Ed should have them for all major projects. Um, we've got it for Cardinal Stadium, a Cardinal, the front entrance. And as Christina Downey reported today, it, it, it's, it's, they're moving along, they're getting the job done. So um, I think we should learn from this and not do this again. And we, our default should just be for, we know what kind of projects need building committees. We know what kind of projects don't need building committees. And we should just write that down and we should take the initiative and then other people are, don't need to tell us what to do. All right, Mr. Kelly, take us home. Okay, I'll be brief. And to Ms. Ms. Hirsch's point, uh, uh, we have to probably talk about this a little more because some people were not prepared. Uh, and how could they be? They would they didn't know such an issue was coming up. Uh, the uh, sometimes a building committee is seven people telling Dan Watson to do as opposed to one person telling uh, Dan Watson what to do. And uh, uh, that can get confusing at times when running a project. I've run dozens and dozens of projects, and it's a lot easier when it is co you're coordinating your decision making, uh, especially when it's exactly what you know you're building. If you have the plans, you're going to, according to the plans, you have everybody already hired. Uh, in this case, when it came down to the, the uh, Cardinal Stadium itself, uh, phase one being built, everybody was already hired. Architects were hired, the design was made, the public uh, got presented the project, uh, the board voted on the project, uh, the uh, contractors were hired, uh, everybody was in place. Uh, and there was nothing for a building committee to do. So therefore, basically, there was nothing for me to do. It's, it's just uh, uh, Dan Watson taking, uh, taking his project on. So in that case, because of the ripeness of the project, it didn't need a committee. Uh, could it have used a committee six years ago? Well, that could have been the formation of the people involved all the way along might have been the delay in the six-year delay in getting that project done. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't involved then from that side. So, uh, uh, so basically, the, the issue that District 9 is talking about is when a building committee, uh, by rule, uh, will be formed. Are they going to form it at, we tried talking to them about a dollar amount. Was it a million dollars? Was it $5 million? They didn't want to go a dollar amount on it. Uh, they MI was the issue with some waiver on it. 
So the issue, what we're trying to work out with them is, and I don't think anyone's really opposed to a building committee. I don't think anyone's arguing not to have one. The issue here is when to have one by rule, not by decision is what their point is. The RTM wants to vote on making a rule when the Board of Ed has to have a building committee and does not have to have a building committee. They want to draw a line in the sand where it's no longer our decision, it's their decision. And that's the debate. That's what the RTM District 9 is putting forward to the RTM. So it's unlike what was mentioned before, where it's not our decision. We don't know when it works and doesn't work. They're making a decision for us. And uh, what the conditions are is what we should put forward to them and see if that's what the change in rules will be. All right, thank you, Mr. Kelly. I, I will note we've had some high value projects like the window walls at, at Eastern that we probably wouldn't want a building committee for. So there, there's there gotta be some, some definitional stuff, but anyway, worth people thinking about. Thank you for the uh, discussion on that. All right, the next item is the policy governance uh, committee update. So Ms. Downey. Sorry, I was just juggling to get a charger and had a little incident at the house. Uh, breaking stuff. Um, uh, the agenda item you'll see is the next set of procedures um, as part of the policy crosswalk as we adopted all the new CABE policies. A number of our procedures are ripe for retirement. So this was the next set of them that the committee went through um, to decide what's already addressed by a new policy number. As you can see from the notes, uh, some of them are set um, and the administration is looking that they will become regulations to the new policies. When they do so, I think the terminology is going to be regulations and they'll be designated with the letter R after the new policy number so that these E's will ultimately be eliminated. So that's the current group of 18 procedures. This is to inform, this is not, not nothing requiring a vote because these are procedures. They're the province of the administration. Um, we're just advising the board uh, of what's going on so that they're fully informed. Thank you, Ms. Kowalski. So Christina, are we retiring procedures before the administration no, makes some regulations? No, so what's happening is we're going through them together and Dr. Jones sits with PGC and we say, okay, these ones are ready to be retired. Um, and then they will not actually be retired off the website until they are either, well, some, as you can see, are already, the ones that are not gonna be regulations will be retired. For example, some are already covered. Um, like for um, Peter asked me earlier today, like fire department, just talk, the, our old procedure is fully addressed in our new policy and there's no need for any regulations, but some need regulations and those will not be retired off the website and removed until they are regulations. Is this part of the chart that you had put together that explains all of this? What do you mean? The chart well, I, I think you you sent an email that had a, a chart that said certain policies were retiring new policies, policies just procedures just sorry procedures wrong p word wrong yeah. uh, procedures um that those procedures that were re being retired in the mm -hmm. corresponding that's what that mm -hmm. chart explains yep. so does that also indicate which procedures are ultimately will be replaced with regulations yes it's in the notes okay and same as it was last month, we did these, you know, at the March meeting, the same way. All right. Okay. There. Peter, you're up. Um, Christina, I appreciate the work. Um, I think we're missing a step here. Um, and I appreciate you sending me that note today. I, I, I think there's a fundamental flaw in this thing that you, we need to go ask the attorneys about, the town attorney about. My understanding of statute is we're supposed to set up policies and procedures. That's what it says in statute. And what we've done in Greenwich is the way we implemented that is we said the board will do the policies 
and the administration will do the procedures. Um, but I, I think embedded in your note was, well, it's in policy, so we don't need a procedure. Well, and some things just saying like some are, no, are no, I, what I, we I, used to call. I understand. What I'm saying is I'm not suggesting what came out of the legislature in Hartford was intelligent. Okay, that's not the point I'm making. Mm -hmm. The point I'm making is a compliance mm -hmm. uh, point, which is even if it's in one document, you always have to create the parallel document. I think the only place you're absolved of that is bylaws. Okay, because that's but why- even if they're meaningless regulations or procedures, if it doesn't really give you any, if it's completely identical, I'm just- Well, no, I, 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 I my, my, my point is, I think we need to go ask the question. I'm not advocating writing all this down. I, I think you've made an assumption in your in your response, which is logical to me. I'm not saying it's not logical. I'm saying I think we could we need to get a clarification so we don't fall out of compliance. Uh, I, I will double check. Cabe has said we are okay to. to yeah, we got to. It's great, Cabe. Cabe, we look. Everybody keeps referencing Cabe. And it's, well, it's, their great, it's great. It's great. We're using their policy manual as a starter for us, but they're not the be all and end all. You know, we need our attorneys to advise us on whether or not we're in compliance or not. So okay. If I could just weigh in on this. So I actually was on PGC when we started the move to the Cape policies and we did look at the statute. It's actually uh, section 10-221. Mm -hmm. Look where it's, it's specifically calling for written policies. Uh, one is about homework. One is about failing to uh, return textbooks. They're very, very specific call outs, Peter. I don't think the terminology there says we, we have to adopt procedures for everything. There's certain things that it actually calls out. So Christina, I would, I would suggest looking back at the okay. statute. It's 10 to 21. You obviously right. can have a conversation with Abby uh, while Okay. Though. Sure thing. Yeah. But, but Peter, that's what I'm saying. It that. says it 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 says here, it says you're right. It's 221 responsibilities of boards. And I, look, I don't want to sit here. You, you guys are all lawyers, so you guys do this all day. I don't want to sit here and parse what the legislative intent was. Um, I, I I just want I want the town attorney. Okay. Um, to say, because it's very clear, boards of education to prescribe rules, policies, and procedures. It's, I mean, that's its heading. Mm -hmm. And then it says it's rules for, and then it goes on, it says textbooks to be used, blah, 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 blah. I, I just think the point of it is, is we need that clarification. And the other thing is, Christina, on procedures, I just want to reconfirm. All of our procedures exist until they're rewritten as new regulations, correct? We have not taken any procedures. We have not retired any procedures mm -hmm. without having or without turning them into regulations. Right, because I when I saw in your crosswalk doc, um, I'm sorry. So not my crosswalk doc. <laughs> uh, the committee's crosswalk <laughs> <laughs> okay. I inherited. It's too late for semantics. Um, the um, the far column. I don't have it up in front of me. I think it kind of indicated that that there would be all of these suggested policies. Well, no, that was in the middle. Mm -hmm. There was kind of policy, existing policy, policy name, replacement name. The far column has notes about procedures. Mm -hmm. And the point I was trying to make is there's only a reference to updating procedures in like four or six, I don't have it in front of me, of like 20. Of the that's ones what, like today, for you mean? That's what catches my attention. Okay. And I, I just, so as a, I, I'm asking the question, not specifically, I'm asking this as confirmation, which is, all the procedures that exist remain in place 
until such time as the administration writes a new one and replaces it, correct? That's my under, no, Dr. Jones, yeah, like, can you? Yeah, so I, I was working on that this week after our policy uh, committee meeting and some of the new CAID policy actually addresses everything that we were calling a procedure. You don't need it. Um, there was nothing in the procedure. And so as we're working through those and the policy committee, the previous committee and the current committee literally had notes on there about what are some that should be retired and what are ones that, that, that go with one of the new policies that actually needs a regulation. And that's the work that I'm doing right now. And that'll come back to- Because I think things that we used to call procedures yeah. are now policies. So like, there's oh, a new one. that should have never happened. Okay. But if you look at like that fire, like that was the one, like I gave you the example of the fire department. So that was a procedure, but is now a policy. So I'm not sure how you really create a procedure out of something that's now a policy when you've really covered it in the policy. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, you don't have a regulation for every single policy. It, the regulation is there to understand how to implement the policy, but if the policy is very clear and you don't need um, guidance for staff on implementation, then you wouldn't have a regulation. Otherwise, you'd just be posting the policy as the regulation. And the regulation is about implementation. Christina, could we just do this? Uh, I'd love to revisit this item. Could we start mm -hmm. with the clarification from the town attorney. Sure, sure, and no then, problem. And then- And we can go from there, that's fine. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kelly. Oh, just a brief comment. Policy, procedure, regulation. Uh, thank you for trying to make this simpler for us, uh, us lay people. So thank you for taking redundancy out of, our, uh, uh, out of these, uh, uh, these things and uh, making it uh, clarity. And uh, uh, I'm not a lawyer. You guys are lawyers. You do this all the time. I'm a uranium broker and a real estate developer. Uh, it just gets confusing. So anytime you can make this more simple for uh, us lay people to understand, I appreciate it. So thank you for what you're doing. No all right. Thank you, Joe. But I'm not sure there's anything more confusing than zoning regulations. I just can't believe that. All right, we're going to move on to our action items. Uh, Ms. Hirsch uh, and Mr. Scher, why don't you guys make the motion on the math textbook? So Karen, if you want to make that motion. Oh, I would gladly make the motion uh, that the Board of Education uh, adopt the uh, textbook regular, I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. Um, Just to adopt the, the math adopt textbook the, as presented. Approve, adopt and approve the math textbook recommendation as presented. All right, Mr. Scher, would you like to second that as the other curriculum committee member? Sure. Second. All right. Great. Any discussion? I believe we got a good presentation on the math textbook last time. Seeing no hands, I'm going to go ahead and call a roll call vote. The motion is to approve the math textbook uh, as recommended. So Bernstein is a yes. Stowe? Yes. Hirsch? Yes. Downey? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Kowalski? Yes. Olson? Yes. And Cher? Uh, yes. Thank, Thank you to the committee for that group of people who worked on it for their work. Now go forth and prosper. All right. That passes 8-0. Thank you, everyone. The next item is the 2021 uh, school calendar revision to set the last day of school in GHS graduation date. I'm going to make a motion to uh, accept the calendar as amended. Is there a second? Mr. Kelly, thank you. Uh, Dr. Jones, do you want to remind everybody what the last day of school is and the potential graduation dates? Yes, last day of school is June uh, 22nd, if, if approved tonight. Um, the 21st and 22nd are both set aside as possible graduation dates. Um, if we are able to have one graduation, graduation will be on the 21st, with the 22nd being the rain date. Thank you very much. And I know Chief Heavey is very happy we didn't opt to do it later in the week and uh, avoiding traffic and all the rest of it. Any uh, discussion on the calendar item? Seeing no hands, I'm going to take a roll call vote on the calendar. Oh, Miss Hirsch, you sure? You don't yes, have to. I'm sure. I'm sorry. Um, I had sent a question to Dr. Jones uh, earlier in the week, and I just was curious as to when we might know, because um, I know the governor made some changes to outdoor things, when, when we might uh, know how that will affect possibility of having a, a one graduation. 
yeah, right now, the, what the governor has um, has put forth is really not impacting schools a great deal because we are based on the Connecticut Department of Health. However, we are still hopeful that um, we can get a plan where we could socially distance and have one graduation. The high school's working on that right now, but it I would say it's still going to be another few weeks. And also because we are seeing a spike right now, um, you know, locally, and it is with this particular age group. So yeah. I just know the students would really like to be able to walk out of the, the school together, but more importantly, families just need to, to have the timing uh, to, to plan uh, if they're inviting guests or, or what have you. So I just yeah. figured we'd ask when we might know. Yeah, of course, she meant to disclose she's got a senior. I it know. has nothing to do with me having a senior. I, I already have my plans, but thank you. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I do have one. All right, very good. We're going to go ahead and take a roll call vote on uh, accepting the calendar as amended with the last day of school and graduation dates. Uh, Bernstein is a yes, no? Yes. Hirsch? Yes. Downey? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Kowalski? Yes. Olson? Yes. And Schiff? Peter? Yes. Thank you. Uh, eight zero. Thank you very much, Dr. Jones. I guess you'll be communicating that to parents in your note tomorrow. All right, item number one in your note. Fantastic. All right, next up is the financial and staffing report. I'm just going to go ahead and make the motion to accept the financial and staffing report as presented. Is there a second? Ms. Stowe, thank you very much. All right, Mr. O'Keefe, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Um, okay, uh, what's that? We'll take the highlights. Okay. Um, so this is a financial report as of the end of March. We're at $110 million on the operating fund expense, which is about 67% attainment of the full year budget of 163.4. Uh, compared to the same period a year ago, we're up slightly uh, year to year driven by uh, not yet reimbursed COVID related expenses, uh, overall contract uh, salary increases, uh, plus out of district tuition. Uh, and, and offset by savings in summer school. ESY has been communicated in earlier months. Transportation savings, including athletic transportation, uh, fuel rate savings, uh, we're also seeing savings in utilities. And uh, of course, the year-to-year -year impact of the pre-spend activity at year end last year. On the capital side, uh, we're continuing to make progress. As of April 5th, the available capital balance is are down to 18.7 million, which is a decrease from the previous month of 1.9 million. Uh, for the year, the available balances uh, have come down about 48% or uh, $17 million. So we're making a lot of progress there. School lunch continues to be a laggard in terms of revenue. Uh, overall year-to-date revenue is 1.37 million uh, compared to the same period a year ago when we recorded revenue of 2.7 million. So a year to year decrease in overall revenue of about 1.36 million or about 50%. Two, two uh, numbers to consider in that, within that number, cash sales is a big downer, uh, down by about uh, 1.95 million, uh, but reimbursements are up year to year by about $580,000. Expenses, Overall through March are uh, at 2,181, 2,181,000, which compares to uh, 2,576 uh, for the same period last year. So a year to year reduction in expense of almost $400,000 or about 15%. Drivers of the reduced expense uh, continue to be salaries and, and food costs and partly offset by transportation costs associated with the uh, food services delivery, but that food services transportation will be recovered uh, out of COVID funds. Uh, the current outlook for the year on uh, food services uh, is, uh, uh, we expect overall revenue to come in at about 2.5 million, which is about a million six lower than the budget of 4.1. Cash sales within that number uh, were, will fall short by approximately 2.9, but reimbursements uh, are expected to continue uh, to exceed budget 
we expect that'll be over budget by $1.3 million. Uh, on the expense side, uh, we're projecting to come in at uh, 3.373 million. And after reimbursement of COVID related transportation, um, we, uh, we, we expect to underrun the budget of, by about $900,000. Then with the contribution from the general fund, we probably should close around uh, uh, overall bottom line uh, deficit of about $576,000. Um, in, in the package too is a report on uh, out, out of district tuition and tuition settlements. Uh, as of April 5th, our out of district placement uh, expense, this is year to date plus encumbrances uh, at 3.7 million, 3.72 million, uh, tuition settlements 3.409. So in total, uh, between placements and tuition settlements, uh, we're looking at $7.13 million. That's actual plus encumbrances. And there's about, uh, uh, there's, there's uh, some pending uh, of about uh, 540,000. So we're expecting to come in about uh, $2.2 million over budget, which is about 330K higher than what we had forecasted at the beginning of the year. Um, COVID related expense update, uh, not much change from last month. Last month we introduced a new chart of, uh, and it shows what the expenses are uh, for COVID uh, related expense to date and also how we're proposing uh, to uh, recover those expenses, whether it's the ESSER one, which is a $758,000 grant that needs to be spent by September of uh, 2022, the Coronavirus Relief Fund, which is a million two hundred four, which is uh, needs to be spent by December of 2022, and the ESSER two grant, which is uh, $4.268 million, which is uh, expected to be spent by needs to be spent by uh, September of 2023. And then finally, uh, the latest one is the ARP, uh, also been called the uh, ESSER round three, and that's uh, $10,215,000. And there's guidance on that as to how we should spend it. Uh, at least 20% needs to be spent uh, for learning loss. And the remaining uh, to be uh, spent on a variety of activities uh, to address unique needs of students' experience in homelessness, mental health services, planning and implementing summer learning and after school programs, purchasing sanitation supplies, and addressing learning loss among students experiencing homelessness. So there's, uh, there's some pretty strict guidance as to how we are to apply that uh, ARP funds. And again, that's uh, that needs to be spent by uh, September of 2024. That's that's a quick uh, rundown of the uh, March financials. All right, thank you, Sean. So so I'm going to have a standing question uh, all the time at this point. Uh, generally, do we have enough operational funds to get through the end of the year? And I ask that uh, with these factors in mind. One is I heard you say there's some COVID expenses that we uh, we don't we don't have uh, done yet. Uh, I also understand the BET acted to uh, on ARP on Monday, uh, and it would be a requirement that we go to the BET and the RTM to spend the ARP money. So that's actually brand new news to us. Um, so that we'd have, if we need to use any ARP money to close out this year, we have to tee it up for the uh, for the BET and the RTM. So I guess my, you know, my, with all of those factors in mind. Do we have enough money to get to the end of the year? Or are we going to need to request funds for, for the ARP? For ARP or otherwise, uh, are we are we where we need to be to cover the special ed expenses uh, and any other operational expenses? Right, we want to make sure we can pay our bills through June 30th. Sure. Um, as far as the uh, the COVID related technology. Uh, that's being recovered, and you know I've been in touch with uh, Roland as of uh, yesterday. Uh, so that's been we the town has already received the funds, the 758, and that's all being applied to recover our technology expense. 
uh, the, the coronavirus relief funds, 1 million 204, um, that will be primarily used for PPE, um, COVID related services and so on. Um, that will uh, also need to be uh, applied by the end of the year. Um, so that, those are the two definites and we're, we're still working on the yes or two and uh, really haven't done much yet with the ARP. There's plenty of time for that. Okay. I, I guess uh, just please keep an eye on this. We do not want to be in a position where we're racing against the clock to get into the BT and RTM if we know we're going to be near a deficit. So okay. to remind board members, we cannot run a uh, deficit. All right, if there's no other discussion on the monthly financial and staffing report, I'm going to go ahead and call the roll. So Bernstein is a yes, Stowe? <laughs> yes. <coughs> I'm sorry. Okay, Hirsch. Yes. Thank you, Downey. Yes. Kelly. Yes. Kowalski. Yes. Olson. Yes. And Cher. Yes. Thank you. You all right, Peter? Uh, yes. Thank okay. you. All right. La the last uh, action item would be budget transfers, which we don't have any uh, this month. So I'm going to make a motion to table that, and definitely. Um, is there a second for that? All right, Stowe, uh, hearing no discussion. Bernstein's a yes, Stowe? Yes. Hirsch? Yes. Downey? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Kowalski? Yes. Olson? Yes. And Cher? Yes. Thank you. All right, just quickly on agenda planning, uh, I noted the GHS entryway approval of the architect probably in May. So Christina, let's touch base in uh, a few weeks to let me know that that's happening. Uh, as I noted earlier, uh, North Mianus, it may require a special meeting from us to help move that along. Uh, the BET and RTM have both said that uh, they're, they're ready, willing and able. So uh, we're gonna try to hold everybody's feet to the fire, including ours. Peter, why are we, uh... Tony put out a memorandum with fixed dates. Why, why, aren't we ju why aren't we just scheduling that meeting now? Those are prospective dates, Peter. Once the RFP is out and they know the timeline, then we're going to schedule the meeting. So, oh, because the memo presented it as firm fixed dates. Is it not firm that's fixed what dates? We're hoping, Peter, but until everything is locked down, we, we're going to maintain a little bit of flexibility. So, but we will watch the calendar. That, Look, what we really need back is the bid responses, right? And when the bid responses come back, they still actually have to evaluate them to decide who the uh, lowest bidder is. So that's- Okay, that's I mean, if, if it's not a firm schedule, it's not a firm schedule, we'll just have to work around it. Right, well, it's all gonna trigger on the bid. So mm -hmm. I don't think anybody wants to go off the planning number. So anyway, that's where we are. Um, Mr. Kelly, did you have a motion to uh, close this out? I do. Uh, but first, the girls of Varsity Lacrosse team won their opener today. Yeah. And uh, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Actually, Joe, they won it yesterday at this point. <laughs> yeah. Very good point. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Very good. We're in a second day meeting now. All right. So I'll second that motion, and I'm a yes. Uh, Stowe? Yes. Hirsch? Yes. And it went into overtime that game, too. Nice. Downey. So yes. did our meeting. <laughs> Downey's a yes? Yes. All right, Kelly? Yes. Kowalski? Yeah. Olson? Yes. And Cher? Uh-huh. Thank you to the brave 21 souls who stuck with us till the bitter, bitter end. Have a good morning, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Oh